What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be talking about shock leaders and the benefits of using one with a braided mainline. What is a shock leader used for? Most people use a shock leader so they can use a low pound test mainline to maximize their casting distance but still have the ability to cast heavy weights without breaking their mainline. A lot of people will say, I don't need a shock leader. The weights I'm throwing aren't breaking my mainline so what's the point of using one? But I am here to tell you that if you are fishing with a braided mainline, you are really missing out on three huge benefits of using a shock leader that will help you catch more fish. Whether you are pier fishing, surf fishing, or fishing from a boat, adding a shock leader to a braided mainline is going to give you an advantage. But before I get into the benefits, let me explain what a shock leader is. A shock leader is a 6 foot to 30 foot length of monofilament or fluorocarbon line that goes between your main line, in this case a braided main line, and your rig. Whether that's a pompano rig, Carolina rig, fish finder rig, just any rig you're out there using to fish with. On one end, your shock leader is going to connect to the swivel of your rig, and on the other end is a line to line knot to your main line. And when using a braided main line, I highly suggest using the FG knot because it is the slimmest profile you're not going to know it's there. It never gets stuck. It goes through perfectly. The next knot I would suggest is a, a uni to uni knot. Honestly, any line to line knot will work. Just use the knot you're comfortable tying and that you have confidence in. But if you find out that you don't like the way it's going through your guides or if it's getting stuck, reeling it back in, try the FG knot. Learn the knot. It's definitely worth learning. Comment below if you prefer mono or fluoro and what your favorite brand is. Anyways, let me get into the three benefits of using a shock leader with your braided mainline. The first benefit of using a shock leader is less visibility. And to show this, I went out to the beach and compared two rigs side by side, one with the shock leader and one with the braided mainline attached directly to the rig. All right, for the visibility tests, I'm out here at the beach. And what I did was I casted one of my rods out about 50 yards down the beach to show you what the line looks like laying in the sand. So I'm gonna go over there, show you what it looks like. All right, well, I walked down to where I casted, and for my second rod, I walked it out. I do not have the skills to cast that accurately. And if you do, you're on a whole nother level. Anyways, I got a regular pompano rig, double drop with floats. And if you come over here and look at where the line attaches, you can see this braid. And I'm using a blue braid, but if you had a high vis, red or dark green, it'd be really obvious. And then up here with the shock leader, I mean, you can't see that line because it's clear. The only thing you can see is that swivel right there. I'd be willing to bet you'd get more bites using the shock leader than would using the braid directly to the swivel. Because if there's a fish chilling right here and he's coming this way, he can see that braid. I mean, it's only a foot away. And he might see it and just swim off. But up here, if it wasn't for that swivel, there'd be nothing for the fish really to see. The braid attaches way down there. He's not gonna see that far. It's, it's like six, eight feet away. And on a clear flat day like today, those fish, they really can check out your rig. They have time, they can see it. The waves aren't really stirring the sand up. The water's clear. So they're gonna, they're gonna see this line. Now I'm not saying that tying your braid directly to your swivel won't catch any fish. But I'm willing to bet that over a period of time of using a shock leader between your braid and your swivel will get more bites than tying direct. Give it a try. You got nothing to lose. Let me know if it helps. The rig with the shock leader is clearly a better presentation. With the line being less visible, you will get more bites, especially when fishing in clear water. Tony Fagioni, the inventor of fish gum, was recently fishing on Navarre Pier on a crystal clear flat day. And there were a few people out there fishing, but only one dude was catching all the fish. They were all using the same bait, fishing the same zone. But the one thing different that one dude was doing is he had a shock leader. And this just goes to show that those fish were seeing the braided main line and it was spooking them off. So when fishing clear water conditions, I recommend using the lowest pound test shock leader you can get away with. The second benefit of using a shock leader is abrasion resistance. And to show this, I set up a test comparing abrasion resistance of braid versus mono and braid versus fluoro at both 20 and 40 pound test. To do the abrasion test, this is what I have set up. I got a piece of sandpaper duct taped to a piece of PVC that rests in these two V blocks. And that allows me to rotate the PVC while these lines are draped over it. The lines are attached on one end to a screw and the other end to a weight. 
the weights are going to represent a fish pulling against your line. The sandpaper is going to represent your line rubbing against a fishtail, a shark skin, bridge piling, rock, just anything abrasive you would experience in the surf, jetties, or pier. Here's a side view of how those lines looked draped over the sandpaper. This is the 20 pound braid, and this is the 20 pound mono. Wow, that braid broke fast. Shock leader still going strong. This is the 20 pound braid, and this is the 20 pound fluorocarbon. There it is again, no contest. The difference is just ridiculous. This is the 40 pound braid, and this is the 40 pound mono. Even the 40 pound braid is breaking fast. It, it, it was about the same as the 20 pound. You can definitely see the abrasion advantage of using a shock leader. This is the 40 pound braid, and this is the 40 pound fluorocarbon. Another instant break off. I'd hate to have a big old fish at the end of that. And this shock leader just won't break. The abrasion results really opened up my eyes to how quickly and easily braid will break when coming in contact with something abrasive. While out fishing, there is plenty of abrasive stuff that can come in contact with your line, like bridge pilings, rocks, even shark skins, and if you're fighting a large fish, their tail can rub up against your main line. And the braid doesn't stand a chance, so by adding a shock leader, you're going to have much less break-offs, which is going to result in more fish caught. When fishing piers, bridges, or areas with lots of rocks, I would use a longer shock leader. That way you can keep your braided main line as far away from any of that structure as possible. If visibility is not an issue, I would also go up on the pound test. The third benefit of using a shock leader is stretch. Think of stretch as a spring. The shocks in your car are springs. And when you hit a bump in the road, those springs absorb some of that energy so you have a smooth ride and the frame of your car takes less damage. But if you were to remove those springs, every little bump in the road would be instantly transferred to the frame of your car, making for a really bumpy ride and probably causing damage to the frame of your car. That's basically how a shock leader's stretch helps reduce pressure from going to your knots, your hooks, and the fish's mouth. Check out how each different line stretches. To do the stretch test, what I've done is I've cut four foot sections of monofilament, fluorocarbon, and braided lines, both 20 pound and 40 pound. And I'm going to take those four foot sections and attach one end to this screw right here. And at the other end, I'm going to attach it to my fishing scale. And I'm going to pull this fishing scale to 10 pounds and mark how far each line stretches on the tape measure. And that'll give a pretty accurate reading of how far each line stretches under a 10 pound load. This is the 20 pound mono. And as you can see, it, it really stretches. It's surprising how much it stretches. And to get to 10 pounds is about four and a half to five inches of stretch. This is the 40 pound mono. And as you can see, going up to a thicker line doesn't change the stretch all that much. At 10 pounds, I still got about four inches of stretch. This is the 20 pound fluorocarbon. And this one surprised me. I've always heard that fluorocarbon has very little stretch, but that's not the case. To get to 10 pounds is about four inches of stretch. This is 40 pound fluorocarbon. And going up to a thicker line doesn't change the stretch all that much. It has about three and a half to four inches of stretch. This is the 20 pound braid. And as you can see, there's almost no stretch in it. Getting to 10 pounds, it, it barely moves. And believe it or not, it's actually a little easier to get to 10 pounds on the braid than it is the mono or fluorocarbon. I think fighting through the spring action of the fluorocarbon and mono just requires a little more effort. This is the 40 pound braid. And as with the 20 pound, it, it has almost no stretch and it, it really does. It feels easier to get to 10 pounds than it does with the mono or fluorocarbon. Having the stretch of a shock leader will help land more fish. 
Fish like pompano and trout have really soft mouths. When a pompano or a trout hammers your bait, the stretch will absorb some energy, like a spring, which will help keep the hook from ripping through their mouths. I also lose less pompano when I'm yanking them out of the water. When fighting large fish that have strong, quick runs, the stretch of your shock leader is gonna absorb some of that energy and keep your knots from breaking and your hooks from straightening out. Braid has like no give, so all of the energy put into it is gonna go directly to your knots, your hooks, or the fish's mouth and can lead to a possible failure. For those worried about losing the sensitivity that braided lines offer, the difference is extremely minimal. I typically use a six foot long leader when fishing with lures and I can still feel every little pinfish out there going for it. And when reeling in your sinker, you're gonna still feel every little nook and cranny at the bottom. I personally think that adding a shock leader to a braided main line will catch more fish. The benefits of less visibility, more abrasion resistance, and the added stretch are really hard to ignore. So tie on a shock leader and see for yourself. I would love to hear back that adding a shock leader to your braided main line ended up with you catching more fish. Comment below if you will use a mono or floral shock leader and what your favorite brand is. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And if there's any benefits I may have missed, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, hook me up with the subscribe, and until next time, take care and tight lines.